Hey guys, it's Tarot and Beyond. In today's Pick a Card reading, we are going to be looking at One Wish. So this is something that's been coming through recently. I've written some notes in my Synchronicities journal for those who are interested and want to stick around for the intro. If not, you can skip ahead to your chosen pile. The chapters and the links in the description to do so will be below. Um, but for those of you who are interested in why I'm doing this reading today, Spirit always inspires me with reading topics. Um, and so I was called to watch the movie Wish yesterday. It's new on Disney Plus and Spirit prompted me to watch it. They, they they tell me to do everything intuitively. So like the shows I watch, the movies I watch, everything, they tell me to do it at the right time because usually there's a message or there's coding or there's something that's relevant to what I'm going through on my journey or to share with you guys or both. And so that movie really hit me in the heart. And there's so many references in the movie to heart chakras and how this is connected to our wish, our desires, our core essence of who we are, our missions on earth even. I mean, that's what I took from it. So the topic for today is going to be on wishes. Now, this is not necessarily the type of thing that, that just comes from the things that we want or desire. It's more of like a deep inner calling or something that we are meant to do or to have or to be. And so I've taken each star card out of the tarot decks. So we have the four decks that you see here with four representations of the star card. And I have some notes that kind of I took down on the star energy and Aquarius because the star cards ruled by Aquarius. So if you guys want to pause and look at this, and kind of go through some of the notes on the energetic signatures, some of which we'll probably be talking about in the readings. But yeah, this is just kind of off the top of my head in regard to the energy of the star, what's coming through, and, and what we're meant to embrace with this type of energy. So all that out of the way, let's go ahead into your readings and find out what wish spirit wishes to grant in your life. All right. Hi, group number one. You were drawn to or you chose the star card from the Soul Cats Tarot, I believe this one's called. This was sent in by a subscriber and I absolutely love it. You guys know I love cats. If you're new on the channel, hi, my name's Siobhan and I love cats. <laughs> so so you have the Soul Cat Tarot here and I feel like your, your soul calling is going to be relevant to this message about your wish group number one. I mean, that's kind of the general thing that we're going to be talking about today. I was mentioning that a little bit in the intro, but that's what I'm getting really strongly specifically for you group number one so your soul calling and how that relates to your wish okay so we have the three of cups starting us off I feel like you've kind of been the word that's coming through is actually lackadaisical maybe more relaxed or easygoing in regard to how your life moves along or how this wish progresses I feel like you get a lot of support from your guides, specifically animal guides. So like pay attention to the animal spirits that are showing up along your journey. I feel like you will already know which ones those are and you probably get them repeating over and over again at different sort of phases in your journey. But yeah, they, they're showing me that you have a lot of connection to animals and I'm just now realizing that you literally chose the cat tarot. I just, when I'm channeling, my mind doesn't always logic things together, but I just logic that. I'm like, right cats or animals so but I'm they're showing me all the animals around you so two of swords as well I, I feel like the reason why you may have been a little bit more lackadaisical about pursuing your dreams is almost what I want to say is because you maybe didn't really know which direction or how you were going to do that like which direction to move in what steps to take how to practically actionably move towards this dream that you have or this wish or desire that has lived in your heart for a really long time. And I think it's something you see, but you also don't see it. Does that make sense? Like you, you, you feel it perhaps, but you don't necessarily see it clearly in terms of how you're going to accomplish this. The Fool card. And I was kind of getting that from the Three of Cups. That's that la lackadaisical energy. That's the word they keep giving me. It's, it's just kind of like laid back, carefree, nonchalant about it. You know, you're not like super aggressively pursuing this dream. You're like, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. Um, it may not feel that way, but that's the energy that I'm seeing here. But I do get this sense that maybe, maybe you don't clearly have an idea of what this is. And so you're just kind of letting life guide you in a sense like I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing so life show me the way and that can come off as a little bit 
mm, passive almost is the word that I want to use, but it's, it's not because this is kind of like the path to get to your dream or to fulfill that wish. Because let's say for example, okay, the, the example they're giving me is like, there's one person who they know from the minute that they're born that they want to be a doctor and that's what they're going to do. And th- that's their dream. That's their wish. That's, that's all they want to do in their life. And then they study really hard and they do all the things to make that happen. You know, they have to, they, they get the money somehow, they do the studying, they get the degree, blah, blah, blah. And then there's these, this other group of people. And I think group number one, that you fall into like this latter group where you are not necessarily clear in that same way on what your dream is or what your wish is. I think that you have a lot of sort of, sort of external wishes, like sort of floating around wishes around you but it, it's like that deep core one in your heart it's, it's it's almost like it hasn't been excavated it's a diamond in the rough it's buried underneath it's in there it's very pure and it's strong and it's super valuable but it's like you haven't quite unearthed it yet or you haven't quite seen it clearly or the potential that it has and how you're gonna how you're gonna hone that and really bring it out so it can shine so this this second group that that i think you fall into group number one your task is not about the the rise and grind of like getting the goal accomplished. Your task is to meander through life a little bit more and to be okay with that. Even when other people go, well, you should be a little bit more ambitious or you should be a little bit more self- self-directed or you should know what you should be doing by this and this age. If you're young, this is normal, right? Like this is part of the stage of development. If you're older, you're still in that same sort of energy and that's okay because it's all unfolding in divine timing. But what they're showing me is that it's it's okay for you to be, okay, those two cards want to be there because I picked up the deck and they stayed. But um, it's okay for you to just kind of see where life takes you because it's this this sort of meandering or unfolding path that is going to take you to the unfolding of this dream and it might not be linear. It, it It's more like... Um, it's all over the place. (laughs) That's what they're showing me. It's like, it's all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason, but there is though, you know, like at soul level, there is a a reason to this and all of the sort of side routes and detours and backtracks, they're all leading you to that core within you to unearth that diamond. And, And by the time that that happens, you will have the skills to be able to polish it, to be able to hone it, to be able to really bring out its beauty in the best possible way. Strength. Oh yeah, this definitely takes great strength because this this one wish that you have in the core of your being, first of all, it's very strong, but second of all, it requires great strength of you. And it's not the strength of determination or persistence, although I mean, that's part of it, but it's like a different kind of determination and persistence. It's not the grind kind, it's the trust kind where you have to just surrender all of the egoic needs or expectations that you have instilled or internalized within you or that you're getting pressure from the outside to perform in a certain way or to be productive. This is the, this is like the, this is the wanderer's path. This is the not all one, not all who wander are lost path. And this takes great strength because you have to You have to trust that even though things seem maybe aimless at times or directionless, that you are actually being steered. And they're actually showing me the scene in Moana when she feels really lost. She's looking for the island. She's been chosen by the ocean to do this task, right? Like her mission to to restore the heart of Tefiti. But she's in the ocean She's lost and there's a storm and she's like, why is this so hard? And then this, she's like, help me when her boat overturns, you know, she feels helpless and stranded and adrift. And she's like, why did you choose me? And then put me in this situation, God, or the ocean in this case. But then that storm actually pushes her to the island where she needs to be. So it's, it's this like process of great strength that it takes to surrender to what is outside of your control that is ultimately steering the trajectory of your life towards this fulfillment of the wish or your destiny because that's what the star card can talk about as well it's like your destiny your chosen path at soul level your north north node if we want to look at it astrologically which we will i have a lot of astrological decks that have come up to be in this reading which we're going to look at after we get through the tarot here so you have the king of swords 
I'm getting like you might feel like you're adrift in the wind and there's a part of your mind that wants to be very logical and strategic about this and and you are being tested to surrender. You are being tested to just release that and be okay with not knowing or be okay with relaxing your approach. Because I think for some of you, that natural sort of relaxed approach is comfortable for you. And I think for others of you, it's really not. (laughs) Like, it's really not comfortable. Maybe you want to control the situation, but you don't know how. And it can feel like you're floundering or like you're flailing, but you're not. Um, You're being blown by the wind of the divine in this direction. But you might not see it because you haven't claimed your crown yet. They showed me the crown at his feet. It's like you haven't claimed the crown yet, but it is meant for you. There is one thing that only you can do in exactly the way that you are going to do it. But first you have to become that person. And that's why that's where this whole winding trajectory, winding path is taking you. It's helping you to become who you're meant to be so that you can be that person. Knight of Cups. Follow your heart, I heard very clearly. And then they're showing me the feathers in the wind. So there's a lot here to do with wind, like let the wind carry you. And sometimes the wind will change drastically and you might pivot or change directions and people might go, what are you doing? Like you said you were going to do this and now you're doing that. It makes no sense. But you're like, I, I have to follow the wind. I have to follow my heart. I have to, I have to do what I'm being called to do, even if it doesn't make sense. And I don't think it will. I don't think it will make sense all the time. This is part of the path. It's about trusting, you know? So it's a tricky one, (laughs) okay? This wish for you, group number one, I'm saying it's a tricky one. But ultimately, it's going to make sense in the end. And look at that. Oh, yes. Bottom of the deck, six of wands, success, victory. You will come out of this with a great achievement that you have claimed and earned for yourself. So even though it doesn't necessarily make sense right now, it will in the long run, it will in the end, you will look back and go, okay, I see why all of this needed to happen. And it really did make me into the person who I needed to be to achieve this goal. Is that all on frame? There we go. Okay, let's get some astrology cards. Because that's what spirit called me to. I always let spirit intuitively pick the decks. And they said we were going to do two astrology decks and then the animals one, which makes sense for your reading. Lots of animals help you. Okay, this is so, so fascinating. You have fixed signs, stability, persistence, loyalty, and dependability. The fixed sign energy is like the opposite of what I'm getting from this reading. You know, it's like wanting to do things in a very structured, predetermined way, following that path to a T, not erring from it at all, and and not embracing change very well. Like fixed signs, they really like to do things the persistent, consistent way. And, um, and that's how they thrive too. And even especially, especially group number one, if you are a fixed sign, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, or you have that heavily placed in your natal chart astrologically, this, this journey, this path that you have basically destined, that you're destined to walk feels probably even more uncomfortable because it's not necessarily in your nature or it goes against your nature in that way, but there's like a reason for everything, right? Like there's a reason that we find ourselves in these situations. It's all for soul development. (laughs) And then the opposite, you also have mutable. Surrender, fluidity, and welcoming change. This is the energy you're meant to be in. Group number one, you're, you're meant to be more in the surrender, the flow, the fluidity with life, being able to change directions on a dime, being able to move with the energy that is flowing through you or that you're being guided around and, and being able to welcome this change and not get so fixed or rigid in your idea of what things should be. And if you're too much in the mutable side of it, being able to take the information that you're getting and employ some kind of a plan that will help you to take the next steps, although still remaining open to this natural flow and the ebb and flow and change of this path. Okay, we're going to get the animal deck out here as well for you. Group one, I feel this one. The boar, that is so cool. I was seeing the boar uh, symbolism yesterday. I I think I saw it two or three times. It was referenced in 
couple different shows and movies that I watched. So this was for you, okay? The boar, face your problems head on with confidence and courage and you will emerge victorious. So that's the victory is literally what the six of wands represents. So you will emerge victorious from this, facing these problems head on with confidence and courage. And I think a big part of that is going to be about this inner peace and security that no matter what happens, even if you have to change direction on a dime or you have to flow with these adaptations that you're being called to, that, that you can handle it. If, especially if you keep this sort of childlike approach in mind, um, it's like it's a new adventure. Being curious, letting your curiosity guide you, letting your passion guide you, going at things with a little bit more innocence and removing some of that maybe built up jadedness that can happen when we get into this human mindset of like productivity and sticking to a goal and a path and being and, and associating our self-worth with that. Um, I'm really seeing being able to relax your approach being important here while at the same time remaining disciplined on the inside and, and that having a good effect on what you're able to achieve. Now, the boar also talks to me about prosperity. It's like, a, it, it's the energy of abundance. And I'm also getting the energy of Artemis and the hunt. Okay, so I think that there will be an aspect of this where you will be, again, it's like you don't know what you're looking for, but you're hunting for it. So being open and attuned to whatever kind of sparks your interest or gets you sensorily excited. It's like you're out in the forest and you're listening and you're smelling and you're looking and you're feeling. And Anytime the wind changes, you can change with it and it will help you to get towards this goal or this achievement of this wish. Yeah, I'm seeing that the productivity really lies in your ability to adapt. Honeybee, I love honeybees. Let compassion and forgiveness be your top priority in this situation. Be your top priority, <laughs> pun intended. And I'm feeling like, the, again, it's kind of a test of strength. Can you... Can you eschew the need to appear successful in favor of letting your inner calling be your top priority? The message I'm getting is that it's not going to make sense to the world, but if it makes sense to you, that's all that matters. Like on paper, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense in your heart. And that's all that matters. Group number one in this situation. It really is. And we'll take this one on the top as well. Meerkat, get support from a trusted group of like-minded friends. I see a lot of, again, animals. You have a big support network of animal friends that are very much on your side. On the bottom of the deck, we have polar bear. Stand up for yourself and speak your truth respectfully and compassionately with no attachment to the outcome. No attachment to the outcome. So again, I feel like for you, it's about the journey, not the destination. Group number one, and this wish fulfillment will be achieved as you step into your authenticity. I was kind of getting that from Honeybee as well. I forgot to mention it. So I'm glad polar bear kind of returned my mind to it. Okay. We got um, one more deck to get to here. So yeah, you have a lot of support. Watch for those synchronicities around animals. You know, you might be, like I was mentioning with the boar, you might see them in a show or you'll see them out in the wild or something like that, or, or like a video of something. So just pay attention to the repeating patterns of different animals and let me know what animals have you been seeing recently group number one have you been have you been noticing those animal synchronicities and what were you getting from that what was it teaching you or what what's the message that those animals are bringing through is it a message of a direction you're meant to go is it a message of an archetype or an energy that you're meant to embody at this time that's going to help you so that's what i'm being called to mention hold your vision yeah i i do okay i was getting that from the beginning and I don't think I mentioned it, but I, I did see that with the star on his forehead here in the star card. I feel like you do have a vision of this, but it's almost like you have, it, it feels almost like a pipe dream maybe to you, group number one, like there's this dream that you have. It's been in your heart for a really long time and you're just, you don't know how to make it happen almost. Or maybe you struggle with the stability and the persistent aspect of getting this dream to be a reality, but they're saying, hold your vision. Like, don't give up on it. I think that's where the persistence really comes in. The external side of it is more about just 
being along for the ride, but the internal side of it is where the persistence comes in. That's where the stability needs to be. And the loyalty to this to this vision is is not losing sight of it. Yeah, that's a very strong, strong message for you, group number one. Do not lose, okay, these two also want to be there. Do not lose sight of your vision. And on the bottom, confidence is your key to success. Confidence is your key to success. And I feel that the fool card in that higher aspect is confidence. It's like the confidence to just trust and surrender. It takes great confidence and strength to be able to do that. Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. Yeah, so if you are more of the person who tends to be more laid back in the approach, stepping out of your comfort zone might develop be about developing more of the discipline side of things. If you're in the other camp where you're more of the disciplined, fixed, control-oriented person, you like to plan, you like to execute, you like to have a goal and accomplish it, very linear, then you're going to be challenged to step out of your comfort zone and be a little more relaxed and surrender to the flow that the universe, the universe and this destiny and this dream are, are helping to develop you into or to accomplish it. Oh, I knew it. Your commitment is being tested. I was getting that from the beginning. Like your commitment is definitely being tested, group number one. And I, I know the, how that feels. So like my condolences. <laughs> no, um, no, you, you'll be fine. It's just... I know how it feels and it's not always like the nicest feeling to be in the, I want, I'm going to get one more here I, to, to, to be in that energy of being uncomfortable, basically, <laughs> like it makes you uncomfortable, but it develops you. Hold on. I feel this one underneath here. Believe in the impossible. Hold your vision. Believe in the impossible. That's what I was saying. It feels like a pipe dream, but it's not group number one. It's really not. Um, you are being tested to have faith is what they're sh- showing me and what they're telling me. You're being tested to have faith. Can you hold the vision despite things not really making sense or seeming like they're going in that direction? Can you hold the faith and follow your heart, especially when you're challenged to change directions really quickly or to adapt in some way that doesn't necessarily make sense on paper. They keep giving me this message of like, it doesn't make logical sense, but it does at soul level. It makes divine sense. It's like there's order to the madness. There is structure in the chaos. And though you see it not, it is there and it is undeniable, but you, you, and you feel it. I know you feel it. You're very sensitive. Group one, I get that from your energy. Very sensitive. You can sense this definitely, but there may be a part of the logical mind that's going, but like, why can't it just be linear? Like, why can't it just be easier? Why can't it just be this way? Because that would not serve you in accomplishing this task. That would not lead you to victory. So it is through the testing of this and this inner faith that you're developing to hold this vision and to remain disciplined on the inside while being relaxed and having this cadence or demeanor of trust and surrender that's going to help you to achieve this victory, victory by becoming that person, by becoming that mutable and adaptable yet strong and stable individual. Yes. And since I I do want to mention that I think it's going to be different for all of you what this wish is, but I am getting an energy of the, the King of Swords and the communication that we had from the polar bear talking about speaking your truth respectfully. I feel like this may have to do with communication in some way. Throat chakra could be significant, expressing your truth, speaking your truth. And I think being playful in how you do that is going to be part of it. So for now, group number one, stay in your faith, stay in your truth, trust the process, believe in the impossible, hold your vision, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because this is part of the test and know that you're supported through this. Yeah, don't shy away from your problems, face them head on um, and be gentle with yourself through this process. Again, trust your animal guides, they're going to help a lot. (laughs) And I hope that this reading helped as well. That's always my highest intention is that these readings are helpful for you, that they activate things within you, bring you healing, confirmation, intuitive knowing, 
the guidance you need, whatever it happens to be. I hope that that's what you received here today. Thank you so much for being here on my channel, group number one. I really appreciate that. Thank you to the subscribers, the, the donors, the members who help to support my work here through liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, becoming a member here on the channel, getting the additional members only content and live streams with me and the donations that are sent in through card decks, gifts, money, anything is always welcome and amplified and sent back with good karma your way. So thank you so much, guys. I love you and we'll see you in the next reading. Bye. All right. Hi, group number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose this particular card, the star card from this deck. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, oh, okay. We have the eight of wands. So I feel like your wish is something that is coming on the hands of like a grace or blessing that is coming in fast for you. And I don't think you, I don't think you see this coming. Like there's, they're showing me the clock hands on a, like how time moves kind of on its own. Like you don't have to push the clock hand. It just does it on its own. Like there's an internal mechanism and it's happening very quickly because the, the, the clocks are a message about time and the eight of wands is fast movement. Yeah. It happens quickly in terms of timing. So Hmm. Let's get more information for you, group number two. All right. Ten of Swords. Oof. And the Four of Wands. I'm hearing recovery of um, like a stable home foundation. So if, if this could be to do with your body, I'm getting, oh, I'm having like this feeling in my chest, like my chest really tightening up right now, almost like anxiety or panic. Panic attacks may have been an issue for some of you in this group. Um, I'm seeing fast recovery or fast healing. Chest, lungs, heart, mind, or this could be panic around an unstable home environment, losing a home, loss of a home worry around how you're going to make something make something up they said make something up like maybe you're behind I guess I'm not sure what this message is we're going to get more information two of cups well it was the heart chakra that I was feeling that that tightness and that in my chest so this could have been even mm, relationship wounds relationship fears breakups heartache making something up or oh, it could even be making up with a person or healing after um, a significantly traumatic breakup or relationship or series of relationships you may have a deep core wish to be in a harmonious relationship in a stable home with someone whom you can trust who does not backstab you who builds you up and gives you energy i'm seeing that you may have been in a lot of really toxic relationships group number two i'm feeling like you may have experienced a lot of uh, energy vampires, relationships with people who were very triggering for you, who, who drew energy or power from you, took that away from you. Maybe you didn't know how to kind of separate yourself from that or to set healthy boundaries. And this may have affected your physical health in some way or mental health. I mean, both, right? If something affects your mental health, it's going to affect your physical health too, because the whole system's connected, brain and body. Three of Pentacles. I'm seeing like you're rebuilding. Rebuilding trust is actually what I heard. That's what's channeling out. You're rebuilding trust with people. And I think part of this is also rebuilding trust with yourself. And I feel really almost like woozy in your energy group number two. I feel... Um, ungrounded is is like the, that's a very familiar feeling for me I know it well trust me I've been there too many times to count um and so I, I feel like this this panic or this fear or this lack of groundedness is really coming from the types of difficult situations that you may have experienced in your life and this wish is requiring you to do some healing but there's a lot of support that's going to come there it's going to require you to walk away eight, 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 eight. So 
concluding concluding karmic cycles is kind of what i'm seeing here concluding some karmic relationship cycles closing out some wounds doing some personal healing creating inner security trusting yourself focusing on what you need and what you can do and the people who are really going to support you in that like authentically support you i keep getting this energy of being stabbed in the back not just because this guy's laid out literally with swords all stabbed in his back like i just keep getting it clairvoyantly and clairsentiently like people betrayed you or you felt betrayed by people even if maybe that wasn't their intention that was the outcome so i see you recovering okay so this may be part of this wish fulfillment is is your ability to heal after this really painful time in your life and create security the four of uh, four of pentacles i should say you do have four of wands though too so four, four, fours and eights could be significant. Four is about stability, foundations, building that security that's very dependable. And then the eight is about the wealth and abundance, especially if this is related to money, panic or fear around money or home. But I'm seeing both the home, the finances and the relationships or the family. But the eight is about the karmic cycles and clearing out the lower side of that eight spiral, you know, the, the, the what's below the subconscious stuff, the insecurities, the fears, the traumas, the wounding, um, the doubts, the pain, and then and then transmuting that into the full eight cycle, which is the empowered growth that puts you into your dharmic path, the positive karma that leads you to the wish fulfillment, the healing, all of that. So I feel like I want to put two of swords on the bottom too. So put this over here like that, because I feel like the four of pentacles really is kind of like an important energy signature to connect to here. But that two of swords energy can talk about I'm feeling like needing to, to, tr to trust yourself. It's hard to trust yourself after you've been betrayed because we can internalize that. Like if somebody betrays us, some people might go and blame them. But I, I know from my own experience that when someone betrays me, I actually just lose trust with me because I'm like, why didn't I see that? Or why didn't I sense that? Or why didn't I trust myself when I got that little nudge that said this person's not on the level or like there's something off here. I just feel a little anxious around them. Um, so I think this is like a recovery of your ability to trust yourself. Wow, look at that. You have conjunction, a union, merging and coming together, coming together, being able to trust people, being able to work with them, being able to have a stable home with them, being able to love and be loved in return. Yeah, I'm seeing like a wounded heart being in recovery a jaded heart softening, melting, opening up again after some very deliberate and intentional hard work in regard to healing. So you will have this wish fulfillment of union merging and coming together with someone who is very aligned with you. But first it has to happen within yourself. Gemini, curiosity, intellect, and networking. Again, I'm getting like connection and communication with other people is very important. This is part of this destiny. It's part of your healing journey. It's part of, yeah, it, it's it's part of everything. 11th house on the bottom. Yeah, friends, like-minded groups of people, humanitarian beliefs. This is, this is like our community, our sense of belonging. That's what I was getting from like the house, the stability, the security that you need is, is going to be found through connection to groups of people, or even just really like family, friends, romantic partner, where you feel fully safe, group number two, fully safe. And if you don't know what that feels like yet, then it's going to be about unpacking what doesn't feel safe so you can connect to yourself and really be able to discern and determine what that does feel like. Because I know from my experience, you don't have to take it if it doesn't resonate, but I'm going to share it for those who does, for, for, for those who it will resonate with. Um, Being in an environment, especially growing up in an environment where there's insecurity and instability and these insecure attachments and a feeling of not belonging or not being mis or, or not being understood, it can be really challenging to know what that actually feels like because how do you know what something feels like that you've never felt before? 
And so I think that's where we can kind of get stuck into loops of like accepting less than we deserve and just thinking that that's normal because we've been conditioned with that. And that's all we know. So I'm seeing you being able to decondition the wounds of the past, the experiences of the past, the environments that you've been in that were not conducive to your overall healing or did not make you feel a sense of belonging. And, and you learning this development of self-control really helping you to fulfill this wish which is going to be actually having a sense of belonging, whether it's with a, a romantic partner, a family, chosen family, or genetic family, whichever you're called to, a, a community, a group of people that you resonate with who are very like-minded and on the same page as you and have done the, the healing work themselves too, right? <laughs> like, I, I get this feeling that um, this is the wish. Whether you've admitted it to yourself or not, this is the wish deep down is to feel connected, to feel that you belong somewhere, that you are valued, that you are loved, deeply loved. You have ambition, realism, and methodical steps with Capricorn. And I was getting the clock before, like time being significant here. Now we have the hourglass. Capricorn is earth sign energy, so it does move a bit slower. So this may have been something that's been going on for many years. Many years. Group number two. And I'm seeing that the progress you're making towards repairing your inner sense of security is, is what is bringing about the fulfillment of this wish. Let's get more cards from the animal deck. Condor. Ah, you're too enmeshed in this situation, so step back and see the bigger picture before making any decisions or taking action. Well, I think that's why the Two of Swords was on the bottom of the deck. I also think that this is why I was getting this energy of um, uh, like unstable foundations in regard to home, family, and romantic relationships, maybe in friends too, because there may have been enmeshment, codependency type situations because of the conditioning, like not, not being taught how to have those boundaries or what those look like, because maybe you grew up in a home where that was not something that anybody knew how to do. Like your parents didn't know how to do that. So how can they teach you something they don't know? And it just became the norm. And then that was like, this is how people connect. And, but it's really, it's not conducive to um, a healthy form of connection. And then it just kind of like spiraled from there perhaps. Right. But, uh, I'm getting you growing out of this but it's taken years is what it feels like it, it's developed really slowly over time it's taken you many years to build this security up within you to walk away from things that you intuitively or internally feel are not stable like that don't feel secure that don't help you feel secure trusting your gut is a message that i'm getting really strongly but it's hard to do that sometimes when our gut is distorted, like especially if we grew up in, in traumatic environments, dysfunctional families, things like that. It's really hard to trust your gut. So again, that's why it's like creating the stability within yourself first by doing a lot of the unpacking and deconditioning helps you to build that trust so that you can no longer be enmeshed in external situations or relationships. And as a result, you can actually connect so this is something I've said in other readings, but if you're new here, I know a lot of new, new subscribers have come on. I'll say this here for you guys. There's something Spirit taught me, and it's that detachment is the foundation of connection. Now, it might seem counterintuitive to say that because you're like, how am I going to connect to people if I'm detached? I'm not saying avoidant. It's very important that we use words correctly. Avoidance is not the energy of connection detachment is. Why? Because when we're detached from something or someone, we are fully within our own energy. We're, we're, we're stable within ourselves. We're secure. And then from that point of detachment from the external circumstances or people, we can then truly authentically connect because we don't have any expectations or conditions that we're placing on them or on ourselves to be in this state of connection. We can better authentically connect but it's when we come from this internal state of attachment that we get all sorts of shenanigans happening because we start to have expectations or conditions from other people placed on us 
can lead to a lot of dysfunctional patterns of behavior. And we can internalize a lot of that and then we place it on ourselves. So it's it's like there's a lot of a sort of unpacking that I'm seeing you needing to do here, group number two, or maybe you already have done this. And this is confirmation of the work you've been doing leading up to this point to fulfill this wish or to have this wish come in, to be in this relationship or have this sense of connection and belonging. Yeah, look at that, the, the penguin, the period of darkness that you've been experiencing is now passing. It is now passing, it is over. The Ten of Swords is the ending of that cycle. It has finished, it is passing. You are coming out of that. So I do feel like you've been working on this for a long time. I don't think you're at the beginning stages of this journey for most of you in this group. I feel like you have done a lot of this self introspection. Soul searching is the word I just heard. And they looked at, I looked, my eye was drawn to the eight of cups. You've done a lot of soul searching group number two. And you found yourself, you know, that's how you find yourself. You got to do soul searching to find yourself. And you got to find yourself to know who you truly are and what you need and what you deserve. That's the stable foundation through the detachment that can create true authentic bonds of connection. So the penguin also reminds me of how penguins choose mates and, and how they how they bond up like that in pairs and how they all huddle together to protect each other too like the, all the all of the the penguins they live in this community they work together in this way so i'm i'm very much feeling that energy strongly strongly here humpback whale music is essential to your healing and well-being whether singing playing an instrument or listening i'm hearing collaborating with other people and they're showing me whale pods again so it's like you need a pod you are not um a solitary creature you're not meant to be alone i'm hearing birds of a feather flock together and they showed me the bottom of the deck on the the 11th house the birds of a feather flock together so find your flock find your pod by creating this inner security right like the more that you get anchored in yourself and you know your truth the more you're going to be able to find the people who are on that frequency because you're very clear about what your frequency is to begin with and who that aligns with you i'm getting discernment being a big thing like b being able to know yourself increases your discernment so that you can connect to the people who are actually on your wavelength your your soul tribe your soul family yeah okay this card wants to be here a time for healing that's what i was getting this is a time for healing, group number two. Very strong time for healing. Music could be part of that. You know, um, the example that's coming to mind is like how people use music to cathartically heal from heartbreak and pain. The blues, jazz, Western songs, pop music, like every single genre that's ever existed musically, a lot of it comes from breakups a lot of the 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 inspiration for many of these amazing beautiful songs comes from pain so i'm seeing you being able to transmute this pain and be able to heal from it in that way am i saying write a breakup song maybe if you're into music and that's how you express sure but it could be anything that really just allows you to fully integrate the experience but not necessarily need to take it with you anymore understanding why and what happened forgiving yourself not blaming yourself not blaming the other person being able to move on and relax into your security because this is definitely a time for healing and things are moving along more quickly than you think yeah the sands of time are rushing actually it's moving fast so this may be a time where you are going to connect with your like let's say a true love or you're going to start a family or you're going to get married because they were showing me that clairvoyantly the penguins you know how they propose to each other with the pebble the male penguin will go and find a rock that's like especially nice that they think will get them their their uh penguin bride so there's something about connection and that could be part of it music and healing fre frequency could also be impo important like using solfeggio scale frequencies the, the the heart chakra specifically like 400 and i think i think the heart is 428 or 432 hertz i can't remember i always get those two mixed up but you could just google it or, or type in heart chakra healing frequency on youtube in the search bar there's like a million free videos so there's lots of ads, assets and resources online 
but I'm seeing you doing this inner healing. Believe in the impossible. I just heard true love does exist, okay? So for some of you, this may feel impossible, like that person is not out there for you or that healthy, happy home is not available for you or you can't have these groups of friends or work environments where you really get on well with the people and it's authentic and you can trust them. You might have been stabbed in the back one too many times and it left you jaded, but there is there is healing possible here. And this wish, it is in you for a reason. It's not just a wish, it's a desire, it's a want, it's a need above all else. Because fundamentally, as humans, we're animals and we need, we need our pack, you know? We need our community. We need connection. And at soul level, even more so, right? As souls, we're not meant to exist in isol- isolation. We come from the unity, we come from source where we're used to being in that energy of complete oneness where there is no backstabbing because you wouldn't want to hurt someone else because it's you. And you know that and you're aware of that. So I feel like um, you're going to be returning home to yourself. That's the big strong message I'm getting here. Returning home to yourself. This one and this one. Okay, three more. <laughs> Let's see if we can fit them in here. A personal issue reaches resolution. Full moon in cancer. Yeah, cancer is all about the home. Nurturing, healing the mother wound I just heard. Like nurturing yourself, being able to care for yourself, connect to yourself, feeling safe to soften, to relax, to trust, to be cared for. Um, not needing to constantly be on guard like the, the cancer has this really hard shell and pincers to, to protect itself. I'm also getting this energy of crabs in a bucket like you may have been you, you you try to get ahead or you try to heal, you try to up level and then people drag you down. And that's that betrayal energy that doesn't help, help you to feel safe and secure, doesn't help you to trust people, doesn't help you to open up. So there's some there's some balancing, there's some resolution here. The end of this dark period is, is, is now, it's at hand, is what Spirit just said, it, it is at hand. <laughs> that's what they said. So you're being able to move on from this and heal your heart. Heal this wound with the mother within you. It doesn't have to be directly with your mother. Could be, but it's more so about you being able to trust other people and in turn trust yourself. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. The star card is ruled by Aquarius and now we have Aquarius energy here. And Aquarius is an interesting air sign, which is often confused with a water sign. You've got water sign energy here. But it's an air sign, technically. And, and air signs are more about the mind and logic. However, Aquarius is very humanitarian. It's very collectivist in its approach. But it, it does it in a very detached way. So here we are back again at detachment. <laughs> um, and this doesn't mean disassociating. It just means being objective. Being objective enough to be able to authentically connect because you're stable within. And I'm seeing bringing love into the situation is going to be what's healing. So opening your heart again to love not just romantically, but just connecting with like strangers or connecting with people, colleagues, associates, partners, family, friends, being able to open up to humanity again, to open yourself up. You don't have to wear your heart on your sleeve if you're not ready yet, group number two, but just just like taking the chains off a little bit of the heart, right? Like just being able to open up a little bit while trusting yourself to protect so that if it doesn't feel safe, you can close, retreat, turtle back into your shell again, and then try again. But just don't give up. Show the world the real you again, full moon. So you got new moon and full moon in Aquarius. A lot of Aquarius energy. This is about authenticity too. Aquarius is very eccentric, unique. So this may have been why you felt betrayed because you were maybe misunderstood. Like you, like people didn't get you or you, you tried to connect and it, it just felt like People didn't understand, you know, it's really hard to connect when you feel like people don't understand you or when you feel like you're the odd man out or the odd one out or you're the black sheep. It, it, it's very hard to feel connected and have that sense of belonging that we need at the core level. So I'm, I'm seeing spirit guiding you to fulfill this wish through doing the healing work, maintaining this belief, being open, but at the same time, protecting yourself, right? Having those boundaries in place because the boundaries are for you, not for other people. They protect you. And then being able to 
bring love into your heart again and open up to the possibility that this is this is a real thing that you can achieve. But it has to start within. It has to come from within first. And, and you need to show up in that way that feels authentic to you because how are you going to attract your tribe, the right people, if you aren't being the authentic version of you, if you're hiding and, and you know, re- retracting into that shell all the time and, and like not showing up as you are. And sure, there's going to be some rejection because that's just the way the world is, unfortunately. Um, we can be our most beautiful, authentic self and there's still going to be people who, there's still going to be people who crap on it. It sucks. That hurts. Trust me, I know. But there is also going to be a lot of people who really vibe with you. And you're going to connect and it's going to be healing. And you're going to have your faith in humanity restored is what I heard. And I felt that in my heart. Faith in humanity restored. You're going to see the good in people. And it's going to bring back the good in yourself again. That deep, innocent, childlike version of you that really believed that everyone could just be friends, <laughs> you know? Why can't we all just be friends? I'm seeing that girl in in uh, Mean Girls. She doesn't go here. <laughs> Excuse me, miss, do you even go here? And it's sad because she gets asked to leave because she doesn't go to that school, but she has valid points and she has a lot of emotions to share. She's very sensitive. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's like finding where you belong finding your people and your people are going to love you unconditionally and you're not going to have to prove anything to them and you're not going to have to guard yourself in the way that you did in the past that's how you'll know they're your people because you'll feel safe all right group number two that is the reading that is the wish deep deep down your heart longs needs and wishes to belong and it is possible so keep believing okay i'm sending you love and healing okay giving you some energy activation in the heart chakra. If you are ready to receive this right now, open up your heart and just let it in. Let it in, let it flow for your greatest and highest good and the greatest and highest good of all. And so it is bringing you back into your state of internal peace, security, safety, unconditional love. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. I see you. I see your heart and your pureness. I appreciate all of you and the support you show here on the channel. Thank you all to all the new subscribers who are jumping on, who have found me recently. I deeply appreciate your, your support here and sticking around for these readings, liking, sharing, subscribing, communicating with me in the comment section, becoming a member if you want to drive, if you want to drive deeper, if you want to dive deeper here on the channel. We've got members only readings ad free as well as monthly live streams with me where I do energy healing and psychic readings for the members. Thank you for the donations you guys send in. I've, I've noticed some, oh, <laughs> see how that's fun like that. I've noticed some super thanks coming in, some pay- PayPal donations, gifting of cards and this crystal ball someone sent in was like top notch. You guys have really been blowing my mind and helping me to feel secure and to really have faith in humanity as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're still here and you're listening to me ramble, I love you most of all. (laughs) Thank you guys. We'll see you in the next reading. Bye. All right. Hi, group number three. You chose the star card from the Muse Tarot. And this was a deck sent in to us it's so beautiful. It's probably one of my favorites. So I'm excited to find out what this wish is for you, how it may come true, what you need to know about it. Okay, we have the three of emotions. The three muses I heard in my mind, but what this actually reminds me of is like the fates, you know, the three witches in Shakespeare's play. Um, I can't remember which was it Macbeth? I can't remember. But the three witches, the, the, the fates, they're, they're also... Yeah, the fates are from Greek mythology. So anyway, I feel like fate <laughs> fate is at work here. And you may have muses in different places, like three different muses. I, I, I'm getting a creative vibe from this group already. So group three, I feel like you are meant to create. This might be what this dream is connected to, creation, artistry self-expression you have the nine of inspiration yeah a lot to do with muse and inspiration creativity self-expression being able to make art yeah in whatever form that happens to take but it's like you like to make things is what i'm getting group number three and i feel like you've been kind of like 
I don't want to say tested on this path, but you've you've been through the ringer. That's that's the phrase that's coming through. You've been through the ringer, group number three, in regard to whoop, there was a hair there. I just wanted to get it out of the way. In regard to how how you were going to do this. Maybe you've been through dry spells where you didn't have any creative inspiration. You know, like writer's block or creative block in some way. And that felt really frustrating. And then other times where it's like too much and you can't focus on one thing and you're like feeling overwhelmed by all of the ideas and the inspirations and things that are coming through. And then it's like, how do I practically implement those things? Or what skills do I need to have to be able to do that? I just feel like it's been a long road. But the wish to be able to create something, to to share your vision, like look at the way that this light is just beaming out, but it also almost looks like it's coming in too. Like the arrows are kind of like coming in to her mind or to her head, but I am also seeing it coming out. So you're, you're meant to receive and transmit these creative ideas. And that's how creativity works. The imagination is the bridge between the physical realm and the psychic realm. So when you connect to the imagination, you're yes, you can create there, which means you can take the bridge that way, but you can also receive. You can take the bridge that way. Let information or ideas come in that way. And I'm being called to mention that the creative ideas that you receive through divine inspiration, you are chosen for those. Okay? So... It's like inventors around the world inventing things at the same time. It's because the idea was accessible through the collective or Akashic or imaginative field, however you want to describe it. Like the idea becomes accessible. The invention, the creative project, the idea is there in the ethers. And then it's like somehow we collectively tap into it or unlock it. And whoever is able to fulfill that creative thing will be given the inspiration for it. That's why oftentimes like movies will come out that are very much like the same, but they're so different and they're from different directors at the same time. And people are like, well, did they just like steal each other ideas? You know, is this like a bring it on situation where they're like stealing the ideas? Like, you stole our cheers. No, it, it's, it's because these ideas come in telepathically. The imagination receives the idea, the inspiration, and then those who are able to act on it will act on it. But if you don't act on it, then it's going to be given to someone else. The, the idea will be transmitted elsewhere if you're not going to fulfill it. I actually saw this with my dad. Sorry, the long intro into this reading. We'll get to more cards. Just give me a second here because all of the messages that are channeling through are relevant to, the, to what's being delivered here in terms of the communication from spirit. My dad used to tell me this bedtime story about the girl who didn't want to get up because I had real hard time getting up in the morning. I hated mornings ever since I was a kid. And he used to tell me the story of like, I I don't, I I don't want to get up. I'm not getting up. And about this girl who like, she refused to get up. And so she, she, they, they decided to wheel her around on her bed everywhere. So she went to school in her bed and she went, you know, here and there on, in her bed all the time in her bed. And uh, I loved it as a kid. And my dad was actually a really great storyteller. He, he had amazing abilities with art. He totally could have turned this into a book, but he didn't. A few years later, Robert Munch, famous book, childhood book author, he comes out with that same story, almost word for word. It was insane. And we got the book and I'm like, that's crazy. And my dad was just like, that was my idea. It's like, he didn't, Robert Munch didn't steal that idea. It's just my dad didn't act on it. So it was given to Robert Munch instead. So I feel like you are chosen for some kind of an idea or inspiration group number three. And it's going to be up to you about how you implement that. And even if other people are given that same idea, you're still meant to act on it because the way that you are going to create it is going to be different. You know, like there's a, a million different witches and wizard fantasy movies, but they're all very different. There's a million vampire movies, but they're all very different. So it's not, it's not like about competition. It's about you expressing this gift really authentically. Ooh, we've got the awakening. Judgment card. It's like, this is delivered from the angels, I heard. Delivered from the angels. You are going to get this inspiration. It is going to come through to you and you are chosen to express it, group number three. So yes, of course, your wish can be fulfilled because it's actually 
meant to be that way. Like you would not have gotten this idea, this inspiration or this dream in the first place if it wasn't meant to be fulfilled. Why would, why would the universe, God, source, creator give you an idea that you couldn't fulfill? What would be the point of that? There would be no point of that. The only point that I can think of for that would be like maybe in this lifetime or in a particular lifetime learning about hardship and failure and suffering. But like, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I don't think that that would really make a lot of sense especially for an entire lifetime, like maybe one time, but you've got the seven of inspiration, seven of wands. I heard take the lead. You got to take the lead on something, group number three. Like you need to step up and force a way through. You see how she's like blasting her way through. She's like bending the bars. It reminds me of uh, Toontown in Disneyland. Went there as a kid and there's like the, 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 the bars that are already warped apart and you can pretend like you're super strong and you wrenched them apart and got yourself free out of jail. So I feel like you're trying to get yourself out of some creative block. It's like jail of the mind. And it's like you have to be strong enough and take the lead to be able to break out of this mental trap that you've been in. The mind forged manacle is one of my favorite quotes. Don't remember who that's from, but I remember learning that in creative writing class. So there's something about getting out of these mental prisons that maybe you've doubted yourself or maybe you've been frustrated with some kind of creative block or maybe you've just been really tested in how how you can express this or how authentic you can be the emperor but you're meant to own it like you are meant to be in charge of this dream you are meant to lead cat hair on the table that's kitty confirmation <laughs> sometimes it's when she meows sometimes it's when i find a cat hair on the table kitty is confirming okay you're meant to be in this leadership position for some of you this might be music i'm seeing the people here on this wavy thing looking like music notes yeah for some of you it might be music but it's like any kind of art and i feel like there's going to be an empire from that group number three like you're going to create something that's not just going to be one thing, one standalone creation. It's like going to be an entire, a, an entire buffet, <laughs> like an entire palette of different, but very cohesive artistic expressions or ideas or, or things that go together. The Empress, this is what I mean. You're, you're a divine creator. Look, you know, and you have the Emperor and the Empress divine masculine and divine feminine energy balanced in perfect harmony you are meant to create and it, it is going to require you to be in a balanced masculine and feminine state within yourself so the feminine is able to receive the ideas to feel into them to be in that sensitive state of receptivity to be creative to see the connections between things to express that art, to create that art. And then the masculine is there to help you strategize and plan and implement and structure and monetize. I just heard for some of you, it's going to be about monetizing your art so you don't step into that distorted shadow archetype of the artist, which is like the, the, the starving artist or the wounded artist. You know, it's like being able to really be in an empowered role when it comes to your creativity. Muse of Voices. And again, I'm hearing creative inspiration. So this is a big thing for you, group number three. Big thing for you. Creative inspiration, following your passion. Aries, I yeah, the emperor's Aries. <laughs> Leadership, independence, bravery, passion. Um, I'm hearing commitment to a cause. Okay, it's not normally something I would associate with Aries, but they they told me commitment to a cause. So something that you're passionate about. I'm hearing creative solutions. Oh, okay. And this is where the inspiration comes in. It's very faded. And maybe you're meant to work with other people on this. Collaboration is a great way for inspiration to come in. They were, they're reminding me when we first started the reading, they were telling us about the muses. Like you chose the muse tarot. I feel like other people are going to be your muses, group three. And, um, could be through a relationship because you got masculine and feminine here or with people of the opposite sex they could be very inspiring to you in some way give you ideas on something in a way that maybe you didn't see it before 
And um, mother and father could be significant too, because the emperor and the empress can also be the, the, the father archetype, the mother archetype. That could be important here as well. But you're, you're meant to take the lead on something, maybe even leading groups of people, raising a family, literally physically creating could be part of that birthing life either metaphorically or literally. Seventh house, relationships, profound relationships, intimacy, romantic partnerships could be a big part of your inspiration. Your romantic partner could be your muse, group number three. And this is going to help you to persevere is what they're telling me. Persevere through blocks in the road or blocks in your creativity or frustration or impediments to the path. It's like you're going to be able to grow past what you thought was possible because you have the support. Look, grow. I literally just said grow because I was looking at the Empress card and they were showing me the fruit behind her. And, you know, it's like all about growth. And Jupiter is literally, the, it says grow right there. Grow and expand. So this could be literally physically growing and expanding, like giving birth, the mother energy. But if it's not about actual literal birth, and again, it's like birthing ideas. Projects are your babies. Yes. And you're meant to create an empire <laughs> of all of these babies of your creative inspiration. Growing and expanding that is going to be really big. Second house on the bottom, physical security, possessions, material values, and self-worth. I th Like I was saying before, like not getting into the energy of the starving artist because that does not serve you. It does not serve the collective either. Because if you're a starving artist, then the people who need your art, because it's going to inspire them, maybe you're going to be the muse for someone else. Or maybe they're going to heal from your art and what you've created. They're really going to deeply resonate with it, or it's going to change their life in some positive way. You never know how your art is going to change the world, even if it's just one person's world. But you have to, you have, to have the resources you need to be able to do that. So maybe it's being in a stable partnership where your partner helps to support you financially so that you can create this art. Or maybe you get financial backing from someone. Or maybe you get an idea on how to monetize in a way that gives you the creative freedom. I'm hearing sponsored. Okay, so some of you might be, this wish may be to receive financial sponsorship in some way from a brand or some kind of a brand deal. Or from, through partnership, because seventh house doesn't always have to be romantic relationships. Sometimes it's business partnerships. It's partnerships of all kinds. So I feel like there's a partnership here that is destined for you, whether it's romantic or otherwise. But it's going to be a very significant part of your fulfillment of this wish, of this destiny, of this expression of your divine self. It's so much more than just a wish. It's like a core part of who you are. Humpback whale, I did mention music and it says music is essential to your healing and well-being, whether singing, playing an instrument or listening. So for those of you who are music artists, this is for you. I mean, even if you're not, it's still for you, but that's a very specific confirmation to create your album, to make your music, to make it public, to monetize it in some way. You know, getting getting the, the rights to your music or copywriting, maybe getting a, an album deal or, or a, a, what is it called? A contract? I don't know. Something like being able to make a name for yourself. I'm seeing with the seven of inspiration here. It's like she's the star and she's making a way for herself here even though it's vulnerable for her because she's naked, right? Like she's, she's fully naked, but she's still forcing a way through, even when it feels vulnerable. She's still making a way for herself because she knows this is what she needs to do. She needs to shine. Or he. Gender is irrelevant here, except for the fact that we do have divine masculine and feminine. It's just gender itself is not necessarily relevant. Shark, trusts your instincts to discern the truth of the situation. I feel like you have very good instincts, group number three. And they want you to trust your instincts around the types of people or partnerships that are going to benefit you. So you may be questioning whether someone is a shark and they're going to take advantage of you. 
Maybe they're going to steal your idea. We were talking about like different people having the same idea, something like that. But there's only one you and and like you can only, you're the only one who can do it in the way that you're going to do it. Like let's say for example, it's singing. You're the only one with your unique voice. And even if there's someone who sounds similar, it's still not the same because your vibrational signature at soul level is unique. It is a snowflake. There is none other like it. And it's built that way for a reason. So there's no one else who can do this job like you can. Group number three. Any other song would still sound as sweet, but it wouldn't have the same signature, you know? Grouse, express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing. There's a lot here to do with music. But I'm also getting writing. I did have to mention, because even the the, what, the phrase I just used, which was any, any other song would still sound as sweet, is also from Shakespeare. Like any other rose would still smell as sweet. So writing could be significant here. But there's a lot to do with like singing and dancing and making music. So for those of you who that resonates with, this is definitely confirmation. This is, this is your dream for a reason. It is a wish that is in your heart for a reason. It was given to you by the divine. It is destined and it will be a wish that comes true. Meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. I see that your emotions are a conduit for your creativity. As they tend to be, right? Like I was saying before, breakup songs. <laughs> when we feel strong emotions, that is what can be um, a conduit for these creative inspirations to come in. That may be why relationships to other people are such an inspiration or are a muse for you is because they make you feel things strongly group number three so don't shy away from that it will bring really profound ideas to you yeah it's like grist for the mill even like hard relationships it's all grist for the mill in terms of what you're creating here a new romantic cycle begins and this it was it was reversed i don't always take oracle cards reversed but like i was saying it's grist for the mill i feel like you've been through some hardships when it comes to relationships with other people and this new romantic cycle which i think is for the most part an internal process of of like catalyzing your pain into something really purposeful and creative but i'm also seeing this could unlock for you a person who comes in, a new partner, biz yeah, business partner or romantic partner. And you have another Libra, new moon in Libra and full moon in Libra. It's like it's coming full circle with the relationships and balancing, balancing things out. A win-win outcome is forecast. You guys know. And if you don't know, now you know. Win-wins are divine alignment. Well, actually, win-win-win is divine alignment. If I win, you win, and the whole world wins that is divine that's how you know the divine idea or the the project or whatever it is 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 coming straight from source because when you're aligned it is win 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 and it is forecast here it's forecast group number uh actually i feel this one on the bottom and then that'll be that look at the bigger picture full moon in sagittarius it is forecast, it is foretold, <laughs> okay? It has been foretold, group number three, that you are meant to rise and shine and be in this leadership position where you're being self-led, basically. Like, you don't have to lead other people, it's just self-leading, being able to lead yourself and, and do what feels right for you and do things in a unique way and act on this inspiration and collaborate with people who are going to bring that out in you or help you fulfill this goal or these goals and and seeing the bigger picture of why you're doing it because I feel like there will be things that you need to address like boundary things with other people or copyright things or because as you grow and expand it's 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 kind of a mixed bag of energy right like Everything grows and expands as it grows and expands. So the good grows and expands, but also the bad. And and it's not something to fear or to be resistant of or to not let yourself grow because you're afraid of the bad things growing too. It's But like you'll get stronger as you go and you'll be able to deal with it because you'll see the bigger picture of why you're doing what you're doing. So Spirit's really recommending that you meditate, contemplate, clear your energy, think on these things really deeply. 
from this higher soul perspective, because that's going to help you give to see context of why you're doing what you're doing. Like it's not necessarily even just about the, well, I'm seeing that it's definitely not about the money. It's that's a necessity that helps to facilitate the creative expression, but it's, it's about the the expression for you it's about who you're becoming in this process it's about how you express yourself it's about how that is very cathartic and healing for you and how that heals the world or how that's going to positively benefit the world in some way because they keep giving me this energy of like changing other people's lives positively and i i know we can all think of examples where our lives have been changed by something someone else has has created and how our lives would have been different if that wasn't there i know there's a, a lot of examples that are coming to mind um, that I've seen in the past or even recently around something that someone created that saved someone, literally saved them from committing, you, you know, like taking themselves out, let's say. And it was this work of art or this thing that helped to save their life quite literally. And that I think is the biggest picture. It's like you could literally be saving lives with what you're meant to create. So why would you hold that back? Or let financial restrictions stop you or let your own fears stop you or or let shortcomings or pitfalls or other people stop you like this this it's almost like st stick your course you know stay true to this because it is bigger than you but it's also going to be really good for you so it's a win-win-win it's going to be good for you it's going to be good for other people and therefore it's going to be good for the world Whew, yeah I feel it, group number three. You have a big purpose here when it comes to your gift, whatever that happens to be. So if you want to share in the comments below, let me know. What are you What are you creating? Let's create an artist community here where we can support each other. This is my art. This is what I do. I do readings. I'm a psychic medium. This is how I express my creative flow. I also write and sing and dance too. So it's like, it's kind of in all these different areas. What are you guys doing? What are you creating right now? What projects are you working on? What are you doing? Are you collaborating with someone? Do you need collaborators? There's a lot of people that are drawn to these readings that are on the same vibe. Like come together, guys. This is a place for community. Connect to each other. Talk to each other. Who knows? Maybe you'll meet someone here who's very inspiring to you. Maybe you'll strike up a conversation in the comments below with someone who's working on something similar to you and you just needed to, to share it here. And this was, the, this was the prompt from spirit to do so. So share what you're working on. I would love to see it. I know other people would too. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here on the channel. I deeply, deeply love and appreciate every single one of you who have come on and my OGs who have been here since the get-go. I love you all so much. Thank you for your support of my work here on the channel. You know, just a simple like really does make a difference, makes me feel valued. Um, it also helps to share these messages with people who may need them. So you're doing me a service and the collectives. That's a win-win right there, isn't it? That's alignment, huh? <laughs> so thank you guys. I appreciate that. Liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting below. Um, thank you to the members who support my work in that way. It's a, it's a little bit of a financial backing for this channel to keep going I, I really really deeply appreciate the members they get ad free content and live streams with me where i do reiki healing and psychic readings for the members once a month so if you guys are interested you can jump on there as well thank you to the, the subscribers and members who have sent in decks gifts donations super chats uh super thanks like all, all of that stuff makes a huge difference for me I don't want to be a starving artist. So <laughs> thank you guys for putting food in my fridge. Literally. I love you. And we'll see you in the next reading. Bye. All right. Hi, group number four. Welcome to your reading. You chose the star card from the traditional Rider Waite. So this, I feel like you guys are pursuing some kind of a traditional type of dream or wish. Now, I don't know what that means for you. We're going to we're gonna get some information. We're going to see what comes up here from the cards and from spirit. But that's just the initial kind of thing I'm, I'm noticing is something about tradition or traditional. Maybe you're breaking free from tradition. The star card is Aquarius, ruled by Aquarius. And Aquarius is tr traditionally non-traditional, right? It's very eccentric. It's very forward thinking and sometimes ahead of its time. And it could even be like, it's futuristic in that vibe. And I'm getting this energy of, and I did write it in, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I did write it in my uh, journal here. 
Unique, authentic, eccentric, future thinking, progressive, ahead of their time. Science fiction often precedes science fact. That is a line from Thor. (laughs) Natalie Portman says it. But I just, I love that idea of, yes, it's true. A lot of the time, science fiction does precede science fact. Jules Verne, a lot of things that he wrote ended up becoming it's Star Trek, same thing. It's like things that things that these great minds thought up creatively ended up being technology was created. And it's like, did did that did that fantasy or did that um did that creative idea become real because they channeled that out because they they made that something that is in the collective mind. Or what, were they tapping into the future where it already existed and then channeling that out? Or into some other alternate dimension where it already exists? I think it's both. I mean, I do. I think it's both. King of Swords. This is, again, Aquarius energy. Ooh, I just got this weird vibe that went through me. I think it's from the Five of Cups. I felt like somebody just dumped ice water over my head. Very cold and a bit shocking and disorienting. So what is this? Why Why is that coming through clairsentiently? I feel like you may have been disappointed, like you've pursued this wish and maybe maybe it's something that's non-traditional and you tried to do something and then it was shot down or it failed in some way or it didn't work out the way that you wanted it to or you have an idea and you don't know how to express it because there's no framework for it, like it's never been done before so people don't understand it. I'm getting this energy of like you're ahead of your time, group number four. So I think the tradition doesn't actually apply to you. I think it applies to the opposite. Like the, tradi- the, the tradition is the roadblock that you need to overcome because you are a future thinker. You're here to, to, to lay the path for the future. You're a pioneer, right? right? Like you are here to pioneer this path forward, but it's never been done before. So that's hard. You have to be the one putting in the work to lay that road down yourself and having no framework on how to do it because no one's ever done it. You're here to innovate, group number four. You are highly intelligent. I see that here with the King of Swords, and I I was getting that from Aquarius Energy. Very um, broad thinker. So I think I'm getting like innovator, inventive again. So it's like you're able to come up with ideas that other people have never had. And I think that's why there may have been some disappointment or like, oops, sorry, I had to uncross my legs and I kicked the tripod stand. I feel like you've had to come up against these disappointments and like time and energy and blood, sweat and tears that you've put into things and haven't seen them come to fruition in the way that you hoped, possibly because other people don't understand them and they try to squelch your ideas, like pouring cold water over your head. It's like a rude, it's a shock to the system. It's a rude awakening. It's it's like uncomfortable, definitely uncomfortable and disorienting. So whether life has done that to you or other people have done that to you or both, I'm feeling like you are meant to pursue this idea. I I feel like for you, it's not so much a wish. It's like an idea that you have. Innovation. They keep giving me the word innovation. I keep hearing that uh, clairaudiently. So you guys are highly innovative and you are meant to make a way in a new way. (laughs) That's never been done. I'm so curious about what this is. And you're going to be very satisfied with this. Like you're going to be sitting pretty, group number four. I don't know how this is going to happen. I'm going to try and get as much information as I can for you here. But I'm seeing you at the end of this journey being like, I did it and I'm so satisfied. And now people finally see what I was trying to get across. It's like, they're not going to get it in the beginning, group number four. People are just not going to get it in the beginning. So I think just kind of accepting that now (laughs) ahead of time, or maybe you've already been through it and you already have learned that. But it's like, just know, people are not going to get it, but they will. They will. And you'll be around to see that point where it shifts. You know, it's like, imagine the people, the, the publishing houses that are kicking themselves because they rejected J.K. Rowling when she came to them with the manuscript for Harry Potter. Imagine those people who are just like, ah, oh, billions of dollars that our publishing firm lost out on because we didn't see the, the, the destiny or the power of this future thinking author and the idea that she was here to channel in a new innovative way. So I feel like you guys are going to have everything come full circle and you're going to see 
that all of the work is going to pay off and everything that you went through, all of the failures are going to lead to success, basically. And this is the wish fulfillment card, by the way, <laughs> literally nine of cups, wish fulfillment, star, wish fulfillment. So I'm, I'm seeing like m make your hope last longer <laughs> somehow. Like, keep the flame alive. Don't let it go out. Don't let the idea be tarnished by doubt or disappointment or lack of progress because it is going to happen. It's just, it needs to be the right time. Like, I feel like there's a timing factor to this. Let's get more information. Oh, the devil. I feel like this is actually going to help people. I'm hearing heal from addiction. Okay, that's very specific. That may not be for everyone, but I'm hearing this, that somebody in this group has an innovation or will have an innovation in the future that is going to help people to heal from some kind of addiction. And that could, that could be literal substance addiction or that could be like behavioral addictions. It could be anything. I'm hearing coping strategies. Like you're going to come up with a very innovative, future thinking coping strategy that is healing instead of... Um, could be to do with grief, helping people to heal grief to overcome addiction. Yeah, I think there's a co connection or correlation between those two things. I'm getting that message. So, mm, yes, yes, confirmation. You're going to help people heal somehow, group number four. You're going to help people heal their hearts. And you're like a future thinker in this realm. Like nobody's ever done it this way before. And it's probably because you've been through a lot of grief and disappointment too. A lot of loss. Maybe you've even struggled with addictions for some of you in this group. But it's all going to make sense. They keep giving me this full circle energy. It's not in the cards. I'm just I'm seeing it and I'm feeling it um, from spirit. Like they're showing me full circle. It's all going to come full circle. Page of Cups. Healing energy again. And this is an idea that will come to you when you least expect it. That's a message I just got that just channeled through. This is an idea that will come to you when you least expect it. It is in regard to emotional healing or some kind of an idea that's going to innovate in how people heal maybe their inner child. Um, it could be a creative project, like I said, that like the example, you guys who are new to the channel, I'm a huge Potterhead. I love Harry Potter. That's one of the things that really helped me to heal through my life. Like I reread Harry Potter at least once a year. I watch this, the movies front to back once a year as well. It's just like a tra tradition for me. Oh, here we are back at tradition again, full circle. You see, it all comes full circle. And something about cyclical too, like once a year, like traditions, doing these things because it helps us heal. That's why I watch and read Harry Potter once a year is because it helps me to like re-anchor, it helps me heal. The books helped me to get through some of the hardest times in my life, like when I was being bullied, when I was a kid, um, when I when my mom passed away, when I lost my best friend to suicide, um, breakups after breakup after breakup with toxic abusive partners, like it, it, the Harry Potter books saved my life. And I, I feel like it's going to be something like that. Ooh, I'm almost getting emotional now. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yes, you're going to help people heal through something that you are creating. That's never been done before or it's never been done quite in this way. Never been done quite in this way. Four of Wands you're going to achieve this. It's going to be successful. It's going to be celebrated is what I'm seeing, hearing and feeling all at the same time. <laughs> I'm getting blasted with this energy of like, people are really going to be celebrating it. Public acclaim. I'm hearing public acclaim, but it might start out the opposite. Like people might crap on it at first or not understand it, but eventually it's going to come out. It's going to, it's going to be understood. Yeah. With time, Saturn is the time Lord. <laughs> And Saturn is also the teacher of hard lessons. Like Saturn makes sure that we do it the right way, which is not always the fast or easy way. And when we do it the right way. And Saturn is also about tradition. So it's like doing it the traditional way and sticking to what works. But also like in that there's innovation. It's like balancing both. The wisdom to know, you know, the owl. The wisdom to be able to tell the difference and to use those with discernment, tradition, and innovation. I keep getting Harry Potter references. Sorry, guys. I, I, if you're not a Harry Potter fan, 
<laughs> what are you doing on my channel? No, I'm just kidding. Um, you're welcome here. Everyone's welcome here. But I'm getting a lot of Harry Potter references in this group. This er bird reminds me of Hedwig. I did just mention the Harry Potter books. Um, and they're giving me the quote from Dolores Umbridge when she comes into the school. Ooh, the most hated character. You might have some kind of opposition or you may have dealt with that type of devil energy or character in people where it's like they try to squelch progress for progress's sake. What does she say in the movie or in the books? Um, progress for progress's sake must be discouraged. Something like that. So I feel like you, you've come up a lot against a lot of resistance, feeling restricted, experiencing struggle, learning hard work and patience. I feel like this is a big sort of defining factor in your development and the development and fulfillment of this wish group number four it's the hard it's the hard path that's going to lead you to this achievement though you know it, it's like rejection after rejection after rejection is going to lead to this virality you know or like this innovation that changes the world in some way even if it's just a small population in the world it, it does have a massive effect is what they're showing me energetically ninth house spiritual growth wow and this can be the house about beliefs philosophies traditions religion things it's like the ways that we see the world the way that we compartmentalize our beliefs wow could be something to do with religion or spirituality something innovative in that in, like merging different ways of being together to to bridge the gap between different people or to unite different people or to help people to heal in this way breaking free pluto transforming wow yeah you you're a rebel <laughs> Um, bottom of the deck, we have establishing a foundation, health, daily life, and practical details. You may, you might need to do a lot of like transformation of how you work or like, how you f battle your own addictions to be able to get to this. And it doesn't have to be substances. We can get addicted to anything as humans. We can be addicted to our phones. We can be addicted to relationships. We can be addicted to ways of thinking, food, sex, drugs, alcohol. Those are the standard ones um gambling like there's so many we can humans we are so creative we can get addicted to anything <laughs> if we want to look at it that way but it's like you battling these things in in one way shape or form yourself and transforming them for you through these like really tough saturn death rebirth cycles dark nights of the soul one after another after another it, it, there's something about this that catalyzes the innovative idea that is going to change your life and the lives of many group number four like i i cannot overstate that it's coming through very strongly so that's the energy signature that's the archetype that's that's what's available there grouse express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing maybe it's something to do with rhythm movement physical expression um sound vibration frequency healing i'm getting transmutation really strongly it doesn't have to be any of those things i'm getting like you're able to transmute darkness into something really powerful and healing and you offer that to people shamanic it feels shamanic i gotta say yeah it really does you like you're able to take pain and turn it into beauty or healing yeah you're the alchemist group number four wolverine you're a lot tougher than you think you are oh yeah baby i see it like you guys are really tough really tough like you have had to f three of swords the devil five of cups pluto saturn spiritual growth with the ninth house the star card like you've been through the ringer wasn't i saying that in the beginning i can't remember when i'm channeling everything kind of just my, my brain is like a, a soup strainer it just still goes to a soup strainer that's not even a thing it's like a colander yeah so but you've been through the ringer okay i see it i feel it i feel that card too so we'll get that one but it's like you're tough as nails and it's reminding me of like um x-men okay so futuristic x-men innovative idea it's a huge franchise very successful now i love i love 
Marvel and like comic books and stuff like that. But Wolverine, you know, if we think of like the idea of Wolverine, he's, if you've watched those movies, you know what I'm talking about. Like he has been through the ringer. He has had a really hard life. He has been tested. And even when like they remove, they, they coated his bones in adamantium, like one of the most painful processes that anyone could go through. And he endured that, but he came out stronger and he's a protector of the people. And he has to battle his inner demons all the time, but he still transforms and protects other people. It's like that type of energy. I don't know. Now is the time for deep emotional healing. This is, this is part of it. Like this is part of it, deep emotional healing. And as you do this work within yourself, you are getting closer to your wish fulfillment, to your dream, because it's through this internal transmutative process that you are going to make that available for other people in one way, shape, or form. I'm being drawn to the seagull heel, here, heel. I tried to say here and it came out heel. You see? Spirits like heal. <laughs> um, but it, it was reminding me of, what is it? John Livingston Siegel. I think that's a book. I've never read it, but that's the reference they're giving me. So I don't know what that book's about. I think it's a coming of age story. So maybe you're going to be sharing your coming of age story or your coming of age is going to be something that helps, first of all, you heal and transform yourself, but also helps other people. I'm seeing that you're like, boiling down all, all this wisdom like the owl is wisdom you're boiling down all of this wisdom from your own experience and you're going to be able to translate into something really healing for yourself and others yeah really healing for yourself and others group number four like i cannot overstate that it's time to release negativity the devil's the negativity right there the wounds in the heart they keep showing me wolverine with the adamantium bones like <laughs> something about like strong bones or this could be something connected to your karmic history and your lineage or your family um there could be a history of addiction or a history of mental health issues or emotional wounding and it's like you are able to transmute that maybe you're breaking the traditions of your family probably why this is so painful you're a cycle breaker group number four you're here to break the karmic cycle the the trauma continued that no what is it the trauma ran through your family until it ran into you because you're here to release the negativity. You are the transmuter. Like you suck out the poison and you turn it into a healing tonic in some, like somehow you, you're able to do this or you're going to. Adjustments are required. Yeah. I think you're going to need to make a lot of adjustments, group number three like throughout your life, not not like just right now. Right now, they're saying the adjustments you can make are about releasing the negativity, healing. I'm seeing energetic healing, mental healing. Yeah, it's like getting your mind right is going to facilitate this innovation in the realm of this wish or whatever it is that you've been wanting to create here or, or you're wanting to see fulfilled in your life. There's adjustments that you need to do, and a lot of it is to do with healing and your spiritual growth. And that transformation is what is going to alchemize or catalyze this wish fulfillment. Yeah. Okay, we'll get that one. And those two? Yeah, two. Okay. I'm really excited for you, group number four, I gotta say, because I feel the energy of the future potential. And like the power of what you're going to be able to create here is massive. But I, I, like I said, this has not been an easy path for you. It will not be an easy path for you. It depends on where you are in the trajectory of this timeline, but it's not going to be easy. But it'll be worth it. And you are tough as nails, so you can do this. If not you, then who? Yeah. Luck is on your side. That's, that's, I was just about to say, like, if not you, then who? It feels like you're chosen for this. Like, you've been chosen by the divine to fulfill this destiny, this path, this purpose, this wish, this healing. And the luck is on your side. And luck, if you've not heard me say it before, I'll say it here again. Luck is alignment. Luck is not chance. Luck comes when you are aligned with the divine, when you are a co-creator with the universe, with source, with God. When you are working and operating from alignment within your soul and your divine expression, 
that's when you start seeing luck show up. But you might have to clear some negativity and make some adjustments because there could be things within your karmic blueprint, within your soul blueprint, within your bones, your DNA, within your family line, within your emotional or mental health, the layers of your auric field, whatever it is that are impeding you. You know, if I want to put it more simply, the subconscious mind, right? If we just want to kind of like umbrella it there, the subconscious mind might need some deprogramming to break free from these traditions or ways of thinking or belief systems that kept you stagnant in your spiritual growth, that kept you chained or limited in some way. And you're meant to break free. And luck is on your side. So you'll see, like, things might be tough, but like when when the shit hits the fan, you're going to be really lucky and you're going to see how that is going to manifest in your life. Especially as you release the negativity, you're going to see good things coming. You and your loved ones are safe. Hmm. Whether your loved ones, whether you're concerned about your loved ones in the physical, maybe people who are struggling with negativity themselves, family members may have really had a hard time here. Just know that they're safe at soul level. And your chosen path in this lifetime being incarnated into that family with those people is catalyst for you to create the fulfillment of this dream of this healing modality or shamanic ritual or creative art or science fiction or whatever it is some kind of an invention that you're here to create and, and those people that you love but that may struggle with these things they're going to be okay and and so are you in the, in the bigger picture you are good enough You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Group number four. Maybe deconditioning or deprogramming from some of the like self worth wounds around feeling unworthy of doing something big and good and powerful and true. Maybe deconditioning fear of success. It's funny because sometimes we fear failure, sometimes we fear success, sometimes we fear both. So we get like stuck between a rock and a hard place. That's that devil energy. Fear is the devil. Don't let the devil win. Not today, Satan. Don't let the devil win. Choose spiritual growth. Choose to transform. Choose to die and be reborn over and over and over again in this shamanic transformation of self. Because as you do, each time you grow and you evolve and you become wiser and you come home to yourself, there's self-worth healing. I was seeing like inner child before too, so that could be something connected to it safe, stable home. Creating something that really epitomizes that. Encapsulating all of the hard things you went through, being able to express it in a way that's innovative, transformative, healing. Maybe it's teaching people. I don't know. You let me know what this is, if you know. If you don't, you will eventually, but if you know what this is right now, and you feel comfortable sharing, feel free to go ahead in the comments below. But yeah, group number four, luck is on your side. That, that's like the central theme. It's the central card in your reading. Okay, so luck is on your side. Your wish will be fulfilled in a very happy way. You will overcome this darkness. You will, you will spill this healing energy into all of these darker areas of your life and your subconscious and the people around you, and you will come out victorious and you will be celebrated and it will be stable and long lasting. Okay. And you are good enough. You are worthy and you are loved. All right. Group number four, that is what I have for you today in terms of your one wish. And I'm sure you have more than that, but this is the one spirit really wanted call, to call to your attention and talk about today. So thank you for being here on this earth and doing this work. I know it's not easy and I feel you and I love you and I'm here to help support you if I can. So I'm going to send you some healing energy as well to help to release some of this negativity. I'm a Reiki master energy healer. For those of you who don't know, that was actually what I started out as before I did Oracle readings and tarot readings and things like that. I did Reiki healing and clairvoyant psychic readings. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of healing energy. If you would like to consent to receive it, you can just simply say yes in your mind telepathically, nod your head or like the video, whatever you want to do that feels like you're giving consent. If you don't want it, you just don't take it. Your free will is law. Okay, but I'm going to give you guys some energy because I know that you need it. I can feel that very strongly, very, very strongly. Ooh, the heart. Tense, tense, tense. So just relax. <sighs> Let this energy move out through your system. 
I'm just giving you an energetic shower a little bit here, okay? So sweeping away some of that debris from the auric field, whatever's ready to go, we're going to remove it. I'm a karmic clearer at soul level. That's what I specialize in. So I'm going to help you heal that karma that's no longer yours to carry, that was in your soul blueprint from your family line, okay? Anything that's ready to go will go now, and anything that's left will become available for you to begin clearing, and it will become obvious for you, and that will be helpful in a good way, and it will be easier to clear that way, okay? For your greatest and highest good only, and the greatest and highest good of all, and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, that is what I have for you today. Many blessings to you on your path. May it be innovative and healing for yourself and the world. I love you once again. Thank you for supporting my work on, here on the channel. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with a friend who might need some of these messages. And stick around for more. Subscribe to the channel. We've got lots more content and, and healing and messages from spirit to come. If you want to become a member to dive even deeper, we have members only ad free content and month monthly live streams where members get healing and energy readings from me. And thank you to everyone who has do donated or supported the channel in any way, shape or form through cards, PayPal, super chats, anything like that, even just sending love my way. I appreciate you. I see you. I love you. And we'll see you in the next reading. Bye.